Hey, I'm Benedict Cumberbatch. I'm going undercover on the internet. It's actually me. First up, Twitter. Do you think the Doctor Strange hand movements for spells were choreographed, or was it just Benedict Cumberbatch improvising? No, some thought went into them. I think I think we're kind of done with the kind of circular movement. We'll see that evolving, I think, in the next instalment. But no, the hand movements in general, the bigger spells, that was really carefully choreographed. And it was um, Julian, who's this amazing tutter, which is the word for kind of like the break dancing of hand movement. He's an expert in creating incredible shapes and illusions of seemingly impossible conjunctions of knuckles and fingers and hands and wrists. And then obviously, you know, he'd give me something that was impossible and then I'd say, look, I'm an actor. And uh, we'd break it down into cumber chunks so that I could actually do it. And it looked reasonably good. And like I had some possession of what I was supposed to be doing. Next question. What's your favorite part about being on set with the Avengers? My favorite part about being on set with the Avengers is the camaraderie and the companionship is just a fun place to be. It's hard work in the long hours, but you spend a lot of time in isolation, getting ready and prepping, putting the costume on, and the makeup can take a long time. And then you're there and you're on the field and you're doing what you're doing with an amazing bunch of actors, frankly. You know, so it's kind of inspiring to look around. And then once you've got over being starstruck, it's just a really fun day at the office, as you can imagine. Long, but fun. Ryan Fuller wants to know, haha, have you ever seen Benedict Cumberbatch try to say penguin? There you see. You just did. Bernadine Bauman Murray, that's a name, says Benedict Cumberbatch. The current war, as opposed to the current war, it looks interesting, but why are so many US citizens being portrayed by Brits? Maybe that's just perception. Benedict Cumberbatch plays Thomas Edison. I don't know. I think we get to share quite a lot of traffic in that department, my friend. Bernadine, you know, Mel Street gets to play Margaret Thatcher. I don't know. Listen, it's, it's, acting's a job and you get to be a lot of things other than yourself and not when we're in trumpet, but you just have to be good at it. And if you are good at it and you get trusted to do something, like playing an American icon like Edison, you work very hard to honor the trust and faith that people have in you. So I don't know if it is just Brits. I mean, I think Australians as well. There are lots of other than American actors playing. American roles, but I do think the traffic goes both ways, and that's a very healthy state of affairs culturally. We can't and shouldn't all be typecast or stick to our own nationalities, even. Do you think Robert Downey Jr. and Benedict Cumberbatch ever share Sherlock Holmes stories or fight over who the best Sherlock is? We certainly don't fight over who the best Sherlock is. You know, we're, you know, we're really lucky. We've worked in these two franchises playing iconic characters, and you know, Johnny Lee Miller's also a friend, and it's interesting. I, I've yet to have a real discussion with Robert about that. Or Johnny, really. I mean, yeah. We've said how funny it is that we get to play these characters and here we are doing something together in a completely different world, different characters. It's a bit of a dull answer, isn't it? I should have said, yeah, we do. And I'm the best. Bye-bye. IMDB, font of misinformation. Okay, so my five trademarks are apparently that I've got a deep baritone voice, piercing blue-green eyes, sharp cheekbones, often portrays posh upper-class figures. Alan Turing wasn't necessarily upper-class. Doctor Strange is very privileged and very smart. But not necessarily upper class, it's more the class of money, I guess, in this country. Yeah, I don't know, American posh people or just people who aren't upper class. But um, I like to mix it up. It also says usually plays highly intelligent and gifted characters. Uh, yeah, I've got an odd face. Maybe that's why I get to pretend to be smart. But I play a character coming up called Greville Wynn in a film called Einbart, who's a working class salesman who works his way up the greasy class pole to being a middle class salesman and married into someone from the upper classes. But still, he was basically a salesman for industrial goods and ended up being a conduit for MI6 during the Cold War and making friends with the highest ranking Soviet official ever to turn informant, um, Oleg Penkovsky in Russia. And he was a very ordinary man doing an extraordinary thing. So take that, IMDb. So he experienced a terrifying carjacking in South Africa while filming to the ends of the earth in 2005. He wrote about the experience in an article at the Prince of Wales Trust, for which he is an ambassador. True, 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 true. About how music can inspire you, and a particular piece that Radio did came on by accident whilst we were being driven off road by three guys coming to raid the car for what it was worth, tie us up, and psychologically kind of torture us and give us um, a pretty rough ride. Thank God, not too much violence. I was put in a boot of car, my hands tied behind my back and gun put to my head. So that was a sparky night in a very big country. Famous for my Alan Rickman impressions. Yes, God rest his soul. Sometimes as an actor, you're looking for the infinite. Oh, did I really say this? This is gonna be awful. I hate IMDb. If you can hold that, if you can remember that in the chaos, it will anchor you and give you grace and ease. I don't know, I must have been tired, stoned or jet lagged or all of those things. I, I don't. If you can remember that in the chaos, what chaos? Chaos of fame? I mean, you don't look for the infinite in fame. I don't know, I really don't know where the context of this was or 
even if I said it. And trust me, the amount of shit I'm credited with saying that I haven't said is unbelievable. Reddit. What, what are the best names you've heard for Benedict Cumberbatch? I've heard them all, sweetheart. I've heard them all. Goodbye. Uh, Reddit, if Keanu Reeves and Benedict Cumberbatch were in a movie, what would the plot be? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But we were friends and kicked ass. I don't know. Wikipedia. He subscribes to Buddhist philosophy and has expressed affinity for meditation and mindfulness. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Cumberbatch did not achieve international recognition until the first series of Sherlock in 2010, since being called the thinking woman's crumpet. Mm. Yeah, it was very weird, that, that sudden moment. And it was, it's odd, it's the first time I've really experienced the live nature of a recorded broadcast. And it was just bizarre, like the internet reaction. I didn't really know what Twitter was until that night. I didn't know that there was this sort of space for a live reaction from an audience. It was kind of freaky. This just blew up in that moment to the point that I thought we were going to walk out the door and have like press abseiling out of helicopters and like flash bulbs going off in hedgerows because it was so loud. And yet I just walked out, there was just a slightly wet, empty street. Uh, normal life continued. It's great that the series got so much love and that our work was rewarded and we got to do so much other things as artists. That, that freedom is great, but the cost of that is fame and that's a weird, unruly beast. In September 2016, appeared on stage with Pink Floyd member David Goodwood during one of the musicians' shows in London, held up the role of a horse, sang lead vocals and comfortably numb, singing the verse section originally sung by Roger Waters. And I'm proud because I literally, I survived to tell you that that is true. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. I was looking for guys in like flurries to, to literally know where my out was medically because I, it, I was like, yeah, this is it, that's it, that sort of numb feeling, this shortness of breath, my chest is tightening, I'm going to collapse. I'd watched this entire concert and it was a gift to any fan of Gilmore. And then I waddle along, people go, what? Sherlock's gonna sing to us? You know, it was very, very weird, but then I got into it and it was amazing. But I literally thought I was gonna die before I went on. So sorry, I just, I wanted to take that one. What is Quora? Is it like a, is it like a public forum where people answer the, oh, got you, I think I do know this. Is Benedict Cumberbatch the best Sherlock Holmes of all time? That's, that's nice. Which Benedict Cumberbatch character role do you like the best? I don't do favourites, sorry. You all have to decide these things, or cure, cure, cure. Why doesn't Benedict Cumberbatch have any social media accounts? Because <laughs> I'd be terrible. It would take me too much time and I'd overdo it. How many times did Benedict Cumberbatch read Sherlock Holmes novels to get into character? Pretty much every time he did a series, anything that it touched on, I'd go back to the canon and just kind of rootle around in it. And that's the best research you could possibly do for an iconic role like that. It's all there, it's all there. Watson recorded it all. Thank internet for questions. Goodbye. It's not really me, it's a hologram. Bye-bye. Can't get up the chair.